But I want to hit this TikTok thing just to demonstrate that this is not just Democrats, although that's a huge problem. But TikTok has investors. Tell us about one of those investors. Yeah, you're right. I mean, there are a lot of Democrats that defend TikTok, uh, but you also see it on the right. There's a, a investor in Pennsylvania, Jeff Yass. He owns an investment firm that owns a large stake. The estimate is between 17 and 20 percent of uh, ByteDance, which is the parent company of TikTok. And he also happens to be a big donor for the to the Club for Growth, uh, which generally I've supported their positions in the past. But the Club for Growth, Mark, has now come out against doing anything against TikTok. Um, and I think the reason is that this TikTok investor in the United States is one of the biggest donors to the Club for Growth. And they're putting pressure on congressional uh, Republicans and, and Republicans in the Senate to oppose taking any action on ByteDance. And just to be clear, so everybody knows, you know, ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, they are involved in joint ventures on artificial intelligence with the Chinese Ministry of State Security. I talk about in the book that the senior ranks of this company are all occupied by CCP members, by people that used to work for the Ministry of Propaganda in China. I quote from Chinese officials describing how, in their words, TikTok is a Trojan horse that they're using against the United States. They describe how they use TikTok to manipulate young people emotionally in the West. It's mm. it's if you've got children, it's it's I think gut wrenching uh, to read. So we're having this you know debate in the United States. Oh, are there security concerns about TikTok? Oh, might China use TikTok against us? They're not having this debate in China. They're already doing it, and they're explicit about it. And you would expect that support for this from people on the political left. They seem to be sympathetic uh, to China, people like Joe Biden. But you're also seeing it on the right because of the role that this investor uh, plays. And the estimates are that ByteDance may be a trillion dollar company, which would mean that this investment firm with this donor uh, could be sitting on $200 billion uh, of equity in this company. So they have a lot of money to lose and they are throwing it around the Capitol, trying to make sure that action is not taken against uh, TikTok. This is what money does, whether it's communist China, whether it's Qatar, whether it's Saudi Arabia. And I want to ask you about that. I can't remember another time, certainly not in the 30s and 40s, when countries were literally buying organizations, spreading their money around, buying our colleges and universities, buying politicians and ex-politicians, the extent to which it's taking place today. You do this research, your folks do this research, your books have a common theme, and that is this, this nightmarish corruption that's taking place in the federal government that's getting bigger and bigger and more and more powerful, and the public has no idea who's doing what to whom and who's paying whom and so forth. Have you ever seen anything like this in, in, as you've gone through history? Have you looked at this where so many people and institutions are on the take, not just by foreign governments, but by enemy foreign governments? Uh, no, Mark, I haven't. Um, and look, this is something the founders warned about. They warned about, they were, of course, mostly concerned about Great Britain, but they worried about elected officials being given con you know, commercial opportunities in order to persuade them. And, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I think the real turning point, honestly, on this issue was Bill and Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation. You had instances in the past, you remember Billy Carter and the, and, and the Libyans and uh, George H.W. Bush had a brother, Prescott Bush, who would, you know, was doing some deals in China back in the early 90s. But it was really the Clintons that turbocharged this. Uh, when Bill Clinton started accepting $750,000 to speak for 20 minutes uh, overseas, everybody realized these weren't speaking fees. These were bribes disguised as speaking fees. And then the Clinton Foundation, they're accepting these $10 million donations while Hillary Clinton is Secretary of State from foreign governments. That really turbocharged it. And the problem is, Mark, that if this stuff is allowed to happen, 
Uh, Washington, D.C. is a town where, you know, imitation happens all the time. If the Clintons get away with it, and they largely did, other people are going to start doing the same thing. And you start to see that. And so I think the Bidens uh, are even more blatant and direct about it than the Clintons were. Um, and the scale of personal enrichment, when you look at the Bidens, the fact that we're not talking about taking money from the Japanese. We're not talking about money taking money from the UK. We're going to actually go to Russia and China, and that's going to be our business model. And you've got Democrats on Capitol Hill defending this behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't think I'd ever see that. I, I was naive enough to think once this was exposed that uh, we were going to see Democrats say, wait a minute, this is too much. We can't do this. Uh, but unfortunately, we haven't. So it's it's going to get worse until enough people in Washington are prepared to stand up and say, no, we're not tolerating this anymore. This goes beyond the pale. It has to stop. Let's dig in a little bit more here. The army that the communist Chinese effectively is creating in our own country. Uh, we see it through our colleges and universities. They in Qatar are spending more money to brainwash our children than any other countries. There are others, too. You can see the influence in the streets, the, the river to the sea crowd, the influence in Dearborn, Michigan. You can see the influence in our tenured professors, the administrators of these different schools and so forth. I call it this Marxist Islamist access because they all hate America. They want to destroy America. And if America is destroyed, they'll duke it out among themselves after the fact, you know, like Trotsky and Stalin. But here we are. Um, and China is obviously building into that. When you look at this, when you look at the influence that China has, and you realize, well, China's not alone, but they are the, the tip of the spear. Do you get down about the country? Do you think we can work our way out of this? Uh, it is a daunting challenge, is it not? It is a daunting challenge, but um, look, I, I love this country. I love the people in this country. And I wanna believe that when people are alerted to this, um, they are going to become so angry and outraged, they are going to elect their, let their elected officials know, and they're going to vote. Uh, they're going to vote on these issues. My favorite figure during the American War of Independence was Paul Revere. I just thought as a young kid, I thought it's so great. This guy got to ride a horse, shouting in the middle of the night, alerting people, the British are coming, the British are coming. That, and I think that, peer, that spirit is still here. But I think that, you know, the media is trying to ignore these stories. But when you start to look at some of the opinion polls that are coming out, you know, from uh, Harvard Harris and ABC News and The New York Times on the Hunter Biden issue, you and I first talked about that in 2018. All of those polls now show that when asked, do you believe that Joe Biden engaged in either illegal or highly unethical behavior to benefit his family commercially? More than 65% in every single survey say, yes, they believe that he did. Um, that's a huge sea change, huge sea true, change from true. where we were in 2020. So people do care about these issues. Um, the reason I do this is because I love my country and I have to, at some level, be an optimist and believe that things will turn around. I'm sure that's the reason you get up and do what you do every day. You have to believe that victory can be achieved or otherwise, why do this? When people ask me the question if I'm an optimist or a pessimist, my answer for years has been this. When George Patton was told and directed to move his army as fast as he could to the Battle of the Bolt or we would, might lose the war, and he didn't have enough gasoline and he had to do it in a relative few days, he wasn't sitting around thinking about whether he was a pessimist or an optimist. He got off his ass and he did something about it. Yeah. And that's what I try and tell people, even though I ask the question. It doesn't matter. Either you want to fight to save your country or we're going to lose it. It's really that simple. 